Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net, and today we're talking about yet another mechanical keyboard. There are quite a lot of them these days. Today we're looking at Thermal Take's Poseidon Z Blue Switch Mechanical Keyboard. You will notice I did not say Cherry Blue. That's probably a first for our mechanical keyboard reviews. This is in fact a Kale Switch Keyboard, and we'll talk about that more in a moment. So this was first demoed at CES. We saw it there. We have... Uh, some footage I'll be showing actually of a PAX competition that happened a few weeks ago where users were typing on the keyboard for words per minute. One guy did like 150, no big deal, except it sounded like a stampede of clickety clacks. So such is the nature of mechanical keyboards. This is the blue switch keyboard. There is also a brown switch Poseidon Z. As for the specifications, what you need to know is that it is a full 10 key keyboard. That means it does include a numpad. It doesn't include a wrist rest, which I'll, it kind of annoys me, but it's not a big deal because you can go pick one up at a department store if you really need one. So no wrist rest. It has function keys from F1 through F7 that control media operations like through Windows Media Player, play, stop, pause, stuff like that, volume control. F11 and F12 control brightness. I believe there are, let's see, one, two, three, four. I think there are four levels of brightness plus off. It might be, yeah, it's like four-ish. And then we've also got uh, a button in the very top right that will toggle your Windows key if you accidentally hit that while gaming. Beyond that, everything's pretty standard. It is a mechanical keyboard. We have some stabilizers on the space bar and other large keys, but other than that, everything is using a uh, Kale switch. So here's the thing with switches. Under your key is what's called the switch. A lot of you already know this. The switch is what determines the, ta the tactility of the key press. It determines if it's linear, uh, if it determines the actuation depth, how far you need to press it before it registers. It determines how much weight is required to press it down and hit that registration point and other things of that nature that ultimately determine how loud and how responsive a mechanical keyboard is. So Cherry is the ubiquitous option right now. Cherry is German based and they manufacture all their switches in Germany. But there's also Kale and Kale is in China. They make what are effectively replica Cherry switches. As you can see in this photo by Ripster from the Mechanical Keyboard subreddit, they are pretty damn close to what Cherry makes. The primary differences between the switches are in the cross points. Cherry uses gold-plated cross points, which theoretically might have better durability and potentially better conductivity for uh, transferring the actual key press to the system. As for if that will ever be noticed in your use, I am not really in a position to say because I haven't tested these things for years on end. So uh, that's really something you won't find out until it's got heavy wear and tear on it. The other major difference is the Cherry switches use slightly thicker molding but really everything else is about the same. It has the same center based, uh, the, the same central return spring. It has the same plus sign even on the actual switch. It's got the same colors. So blue in kale is effectively blue in cherry. They're a little bit different in the spec, but ultimately they can be thought of as equivalents. The same for brown and red and, and everything else. So that's the deal with the switches. You can read the full article in the link below if you want to learn more about the switches and see some more images of the differences. As for the Poseidon Z, well, once we get past the switches, it's got a five-year warranty, which uh, does bolster my confidence in recommending it given the different switch type. I normally don't feel too confident recommending something made in China that's a replica of something made in the West that's been around for a while, but... It's a pretty close replica. The reason they can get away with this is because the patent has expired, so it's all completely clean, and a five-year warranty does give you that bit of confidence that, hey, if this thing falters miserably, hopefully Thermaltake will honor the warranty and replace it. So, so that's kind of what we've got going for us here on the confidence side. On the specs side, there's a normal 6 to 8 N key rollover. Uh, in, in testing the rollover, I was not ever able to press keys that did not register, so I don't think that will be a concern for you. Um, there's no special USB or 3.5 millimeter sockets on the board. It's pretty straightforward. It's just a keyboard. No special features, no volume roller, none of that stuff, just a keyboard. And the reason they're doing that is because they want to come in at the $60 to $80 price point, which they do pretty well. I've seen it at $60 to $80 everywhere. And there's really not a lot of competition in that price range for a keyboard with this uh, relatively high quality 
build and moderate quality switches in my testing. So the blue switches are very clacky. If you if you like, I don't know if you can hear that, but if you like the clackiness and uh, and you want to feel like you're in a press room from the 50s, then you'll like the blue switches. If you want something more damped and uh, something that's more favored by, for example, StarCraft II pros, you should look into the brown switches. They're going to be very close to Cherry's brown switches. Beyond that, the look and feel are, are pretty important here. So in terms of the feel, when I was using it, it's using the normal uh, sort of sloped uh, cylindrical caps. So pretty standard keycaps. Everything feels fine. The keys aren't spaced weirdly. They're, the keys aren't sized weirdly, so you don't have to relearn the keyboard. The uh, tactility is good. It's pretty tactile. There's a, a lot of kick when you push it down, it kicks back kind of hard. So that's really nice if you're doing a lot of typing. If you are a typist in any measure of the word or a journalist or something like that, you might enjoy the speed with which the keys rebound because that uh, that rebound sort of helps you jump from one key to the next. As for whether that increases words per minute, I have no idea, but it feels pretty good, so who cares? And in terms of gaming, it you know, it's you push WASD and it works. So there's really not uh, for APM type stuff. I guess you might benefit from uh, the tactility if you are good enough to notice. But as for how good you need to be to notice that, I am not qualified to answer because I was only in Diamond and StarCraft. So my thoughts on the keyboard, it's I'm OK with it. I think if I were spending 60 to $80, I would buy this pretty, actually pretty definitively I would buy this because there's not a lot of good competition in this price range. The closest keyboard that I liked that was nearby was Corsair's K65 compact keyboard. It has no 10 key, hence compact, and I, I can't use that because I need 10 key. If you can get away without it or you don't even want it, then perhaps consider the K65 versus the Poseidon Z for the same price. If you increase your budget a bit to 90 bucks, you can start looking at Cooler Master Storm Quickfire TK, which is an MX Brown switch. So if you really want Cherry, you don't feel comfortable with Kale, then you know you got to spend more money. That's the that's the deal when you're going with the known brand. Uh, competition is a good thing though, so I'm okay with Kale entering the market. Corsair has a K70, which I recommend pretty regularly in the $113 price range. Links in the in the uh, article if you want links for these keyboards. And then DOS Keyboard is one of the higher or highest quality mechanical keyboard manufacturers. They've been at it for a while. They have their DOS Keyboard Pro at $130, and Ducky has their Shine 3 in the same price range. So you can see the, the scale here is pretty large, or it's, it's a pretty wide spectrum of pricing. If we pull it back to reality, 60 to 80 bucks, I'd buy the Poseidon Z. Going to 90 bucks, heavily consider the Quickfire, and then once you're above 90, you've got the whole world open to you in terms of options. So I don't really have any serious complaints here. I really wish it had a wrist rest. I know you can go to a department store and buy a cheap wrist rest, but it just doesn't work for me. I have concerns with my wrists where I actually need to, to get a good keyboard for that. So if you have similar concerns, then perhaps you should evaluate what your needs are in that regard. For most people, I don't think it's relevant. It doesn't have any frills. It is completely no frills. So you're paying for a keyboard, you get a keyboard. The tactility is good. I like the feel and there's a warranty that will hopefully back it up if something goes wrong, given that these are kale switches, which for a lot of us are untested. So those are my thoughts. Link in the description below if you want the full article review, which contains more information on all of this stuff. And let me know what you think. I will see you all next time. Peace.